Number 24. A 60 kilogram skier with an initial speed of 12 meters per second coasts up a 2.5 meter high rise as shown in figure 7.39. Find her final speed at the top given that the coefficient of friction between her skis and the snow is 0 0.08. All right. So, um, so first things first. So we have to think about right the general nature of this problem. So we're looking to find the final velocity at the top of the hill. And we understand that uh, she is traveling at a certain speed at the bottom. So thinking from an energy perspective, all of the energy initially is kinetic because there is no height to her relative to the ground here. It's zero. And then after she travels up the slope here, right, she has gained some height and therefore has gained some potential energy, all right, due to gravity. And therefore, her kinetic energy should have come down. And thus, her velocity should have also come down. That should make sense. Okay, but there's one additional thing here. As she's traveling up this slope, she is experiencing friction. Right, so friction is a non-conservative force. It removes mechanical work, right, or mechanical energy out of the system. So instead of all this energy here being purely converted to potential and kinetic, right at the top, some of this kinetic energy is being lost well, due to friction as she travels up the slope. So the total energy at the end will be less than the total energy at the beginning for the conservative forces. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, in thinking through that, it's important to, because I'm going to start with this equation, all right, that the work done by the non-conservative forces will equal the final amount of energy minus the initial amount of energy, okay? So what uh, is or are, right, the non-conservative forces and non-conservative work, therefore, in the problem? Well, we just mentioned it, right? It's going to be friction. So this could really be broken down to say the work due to friction, all right, should equal then the uh, final amount of energy minus the initial amount of energy. Okay, that sounds fair. Now, let's expand on this a little bit. The work due to friction, right? How do I, um, how can I break that down a little further? I mean, if I'm looking back in the problem, they're giving me the coefficient of friction. Hmm, so maybe they want me to calculate, I don't know, frictional force or something like that, right? So they, they, they are going to want us to do that, right? So we got to think about how uh, work relates to force, and that's where this equation comes in on the right-hand side. So basically, right, if I were to say the work um, of friction, right, or, or the work due to friction should be equal to the force of friction, right, multiplied by the distance the object travels, multiplied uh, by the cosine of the angle between these two vectors, Right, so what I'm basically going to do is substitute this in now for my work of friction. Okay, so let's just erase that. Okay, great. And let's plug that on in. Okay, so instead of this, remember we're now going to write the force of friction times the distance the object travels while, while it is experiencing the force of friction multiplied uh, by the cosine of the angle between the force vector here and the displacement vector should therefore be equal to now the final energy. Well, let's break that apart now. Final energy, right? This is your final state. So uh, what are the two types of energy that um, she has at the final position? Well, she has both height and some speed. Therefore, she has both gravitational potential energy and kinetic. That should make sense. So the final here, right, should be the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic potential energy right, at the final points. Okay, great. And that should then be minus the initial energy, and the only initial energy is kinetic, right, because she doesn't have a height relative to the ground. So the kinetic energy here will, uh, so we're subtracting the kinetic energy initially. All right, so now let's take a look at each piece, all right? Do we know the force of friction? No, we don't, right? All right, so that's where I'm gonna start Right, that's what I'm going to start uh, digging my teeth into, so to speak. Right, I'm going to try to figure out now how can I find this force of friction. So let me draw an axis over here, and I'm rotating the axis about 35 degrees, right counterclockwise. All right, why? Because I'm representing this angle. So what I'm going to do, right, as she travels up this hill, I'm going to pretend to detail a point right here. All right, 
as she's on the hill, I want to talk about the forces she is experiencing, right? And one force is her weight, right? That is going to be pointing straight down. So in terms of my little coordinate system here, this red vector will represent her weight. Okay, great. So now, um, what would be, I was just thinking about if I should go to normal force yet, but um, we notice that this weight is both in the X and Y planes. So therefore, why don't we just quickly break that up into, vec into its components first? So here is the Y component to the weight. And remember, it's in pointing in the negative Y direction. So that's negative W sub Y. And then there's also an X component to the weight, right? And that would be negative W sub X. Okay. Now, there's also a normal force, right, provided by the hill on the skier, right, pointing uh, and opposing the W sub Y, right? And remember, we've done problems like this in Chapter 4, right, that the um, normal force here will be equal but opposite in magnitude, right, to the weight in the Y direction. So I'm just going to make a note of that over here. So the normal force will equal negative W sub Y. Okay. Now, that's great. Now, there's also a frictional force, right, playing or acting on the skier. Now, which way is that going to show in my diagram? Well, the frictional force, right, is going to be pointing to the left. Why? Well, because she's traveling up the hill this way at an angle 35 degrees, right? So, in terms of this diagram, she's traveling in this direction. Friction always opposes the motion and therefore will be pointing in the exact opposite direction. So, this right here, my friends, is the frictional force. Okay, so let's start detailing the uh, frictional force because that's really what I want to try to get into the formula here. So I can say now that the uh, frictional force, right, you might say, well, there's two types, kinetic and static. Which one are we dealing with? Well, what do you think? We're dealing with kinetic, right? Why? Because it, kinetic friction is the friction of motion. And she is in motion the whole time up the slope, right? So that should be cool. So now the coefficient of kinetic friction, excuse me, the uh, uh, force of kinetic friction should equal the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. Ah, okay. So I do know this, right? So that definitely helps me. That helps me find my force of friction. But the only thing is I don't have a value for this yet. I don't know what the normal force is, right? I, I, don't, I don't know it yet. So now I switch my focus to finding out more about the normal force. And I realize that the normal force is the is equal to the is equal to negative w sub y. So I'm thinking to myself, well, um, how is the weight and w sub y related? Don't forget, we know this angle in here. This angle is 35. Okay? Why is that the case? Well, there's a geometric way to understand it, but just remember I rotated my axes by 35 degrees that way. You know, so if I keep a plumb line straight down, it should be exactly that 35 degrees. All right. So now let me create uh, a trigonometric equation that relates these quantities. The angle, this side that's adjacent to the angle, and then the hypotenuse of W. Right. That sounds a lot like cosine to me. So cosine of 35 will be equal to negative W sub Y all over the weight. And remember, the weight is just mg. Okay. So here, let's do a couple of things. So to solve for W sub Y, just cross multiply, and then I'm gonna distribute the negative already. So it's gonna be W sub Y is equal to negative W times the cosine of 35. Now remember, the weight here, right, W sub Y will equal negative MG, all right, cosine of 35. So now this value I can then take this and plug that into my normal force formula here. And then realize it's a double negative, right? So that should make this positive, which makes sense. It's pointing in the positive y. And then I can take that and plug it in here, right? So here we go. So the force of friction will be equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied then by mg. Uh, cosine of 35. And now we know this, right? That was given. We know the mass. We probably won't even need it. It'll all cancel. And then the gravitational acceleration, we know 9.8 and 35. So actually, we got this now, right? 
we know this piece. So I can simply just take that and plug it into my formula. Okay, so let me do that now, all right? So now what we have here is I'm gonna write, so coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by mg cosine of 35. Okay, now that's great. Now that whole, that's the force of friction. Now that should be multiplied by the distance that the force of friction is acting. So what's the, you know, go back to the picture up here. The distance she's traveling while experiencing this frictional force is that distance. So how do we find this distance? Well, we know something about this triangle. What do we know? Well, we know two things actually. What do we know? We know this angle in here, it's 35 degrees, and we also know the side opposite, right? This side right here is 2.5 meters. So can I find D if I know those two? Of course I can, right? Just simple, again, Sokotoa, right? In this case, we're gonna use sine. So sine, so I'll do it over here. So the sine of 35, right, will be equal to, uh, what do we got? 2.5 over um, D, right? Over D. So D will simply be, and I, can even, I could have even left these out. I could have just called it H and whatnot. Um, but it doesn't matter. So D will equal uh, 2.5 over sine of 35. All you have to simply do is just switch the numerator, numerator here and denominator, okay? So now I do know D, right? I can, this is a real number. So now I can take this and plug it in for D. Okay, so let's do that. So now that's gonna be 2.5, 2.5 over cosine of 35. Excuse me, sine of 35. Sine of 35. Okay, great. Then times now, okay, cosine of theta. Now be careful, you might say, oh, theta, I know theta, that's 35, mm mm mm, -mm. right? This angle is special, This meaning it's referencing something specific. This angle, given this formula, right? And remember, it's the work formula, okay? This angle right here represents the angle between the force of friction vector and the distance the object is traveling. So let's go back up to the picture, okay? So she is traveling in this direction. Right, she's traveling up the slope. Okay, where's friction pointing? Remember, friction always opposes the motion. It's pointing in the exact opposite direction. Now, if it's pointing in the exact opposite direction, right, and I line them, excuse me, tail to tail, what's the angle between them? 180, right? So this angle here is 180. Please do not put 35 in there, all right? It's 180. So that's why you want to keep, you know, the, the, this problem gets hard because it's long, not because it's necessarily too complicated, it's just long, and the chance of making silly mistakes goes up significantly, all right? So just always keep in mind, take your time, go through each variable at a time, just like I'm doing, right? And if I don't know what it is, then I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find a way to figure it out. So next, I'm moving on to then the final uh, potential energy due to gravity. So remember, that has a um, value of mgh, okay? So m, I know the mass, g, that's good, and then h, right? Well, I do know the height, right? It reached 2.5 meters at the final location. Okay, so that's fine. So I know that, I'm not gonna worry about that. Plus then, the final kinetic energy. So remember the kinetic energy formula, okay? So it's 1 half mv squared, so this is plus 1 half, Mass, which I know, VF, because it's the final, squared. And guess what? This is what I'm looking for. So I'm, that's okay if I don't know that. So I'll leave that as my unknown. So far I know literally everything else, okay? Last but not least, then it's minus the initial kinetic energy. So it's gonna be minus one half MVI squared. And do I know the initial velocity? Yeah, they gave it to me, right? It's gonna be 12. So guess what, guys? This is it. We got it. Now it's just a whole bunch of jumbled math. But the physics is over. It's just math now. All right? So 
our job is to solve this for VF, okay? So we could do this in a couple of ways. Um, I'm gonna try to do this like all in one step more or less. So basically, we have to subtract this value right from both sides, and then we'll have to then add this value right to both sides, okay? So when I do that, first I'll write this down, okay? So it's gonna be a positive now, right? Positive one half MVI squared, okay? Uh, then it's going to be, I'll write minus, because then I have to subtract this on over, right? Minus MG H sub F, the final height, okay? And now I'm just gonna copy everything else on the left-hand side, all right? Plus, coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by mg, multiplied by cosine of 35, okay? So let's put that in brackets here. Then times 2.5, right? Which is essentially the, uh, the height uh, times the sine of 35 times the cosine of 180. Re okay, great. And remember, these both would, would have canceled, and that should equal now 1 half mv squared. So how do I solve for v? Well, I would have had to divide out now the 1 half m. So I can do that to both sides, right? So I'll write this already all over 1 half m. Okay, great. Now I'm just going to manipulate since I'm just running out of space. I'm just going to then get rid of 1 half m on this side. And what am I left with then? I would be left with v squared, right? So how do I get v and not v squared? Well, I have to take the square root, right, of both sides. So take the square root of both sides. And when I do that on the right-hand side, I get rid of the square. So it's just v, right? And I'm just going to make that a little neater. So this whole thing, and I'll, let me move this equal sign out of the uh, radical here. This whole thing would equal then v. So now all I got to do is just plug it all into the calculator. And what I'll do, if you notice, there's mass in this term, there's mass in this term, right? And there's mass in this whole term, okay? And there's mass here. So if I factored them all out, they would all cancel, all right? So I can just simplify this a little bit. So let's just plug everything in. Okay, so square root now of 1 half right, times the initial velocity squared, so the initial velocity was 12, and that whole thing, there's a dot there, whole thing squared, minus then gravity, 9.8, times the height, which was 2.5, the final height, plus then the coefficient of kinetic friction, right, which was 0 0.0800, times then gravity, 9.80, times then the cosine of 35, times then 2.5 over the sine of 35 times then the cosine of 180. And that is all over, that is all over one half, right? That is all over one half. So sorry, it's a little crammed down there, guys. I'm going to write the final answer up here, though, okay? So let's take out the calculator. Let's plug it all in. So there it is. So now we get a value of about 9.5. Four five or four six, right? We're really close to nine point four six, and that is in meters per second. All right, and that will be the final answer. Oops, that will be the final answer. So, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. All right, long problem, but it's a little complicated, but not bad, right? We see the principles being applied uh, pretty rigorously here, so it should hopefully make sense. Um, you know, it's just that since the problem becomes long and the math is hard and there's a lot of steps, silly mistakes may be prone to happen. You just have to take your time. All right. So, guys, again, thanks for joining in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. That would be great. And uh, if you like, tell your friends. That'd be cool. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.